cool dad back again. I know, two videos in one day. What the hell am I thinking? Um, but I'm going to do the follow-up now on the flour tortillas I made earlier. I think I figured out the noise issue from the earlier video. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see once this gets recorded. Um, just got back from the store, so next up you're going to see a quick montage of the store run. Um, I'm working on that. I'm trying to figure out. And I also working on. I got to find some other music for those little montages. But in the meantime, check out the store run. We're going to make nachos tonight, so we're going to go through making the meat, turning the tortillas into nacho chips, and then making the nachos. Um, I'm regretting giving the dogs their peanut butter dog ice cream. <laughs> Oh, that was a mess. That was such a mess. Uh, I'm going to be cleaning all night. But on that note, let's go to the montage. Okay, for our meats for the nachos, we're doing a mix of ground beef and smoked chorizo sausage. So, I'm going to start with the ground beef. Bust off a chunk of it here. Uh, because I'm mixing the meats, I'm just going to kind of, this came out of the freezer and spent the day in the refrigerator today, so still a little chilly in the middle, but that's okay. Um, I've got my pan on medium heat. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to brown down the beef first. After I grab a paper towel, wipe off my hands. I'm going to ground, brown down the beef first, and then I will, because that way I can mix in the seasoning I want for the beef, and then I'll add the chorizo afterwards. Chorizo, chorizo, depending on who you ask how it's pronounced. Uh, there we go. And put the meat back in the freezer. Okay. Now, while that's coming up to temperature, let me find an opening here. Yeah, they weren't nice enough to make an opening. So, scooch. I must make my own opening. Let's see here. Now, you know, they make all sorts of stuff in easy open packs, no frustration packaging these days. Why can't they do it for me? Um, I'm going to do two. Those will go in a Ziploc. Now, because I want crumble, Really, you guys? Because I want crumble, I need to do a little prep here on the chorizo. What I'm doing is peeling the, the casing off, or the skin, depending on how you grew up. There we go. So I just peeled the skin off. They can go right in the trash for now. Some people do this anyway, but I generally only do it when I'm going to be using a crumble versus the actual like sausage type meats. If I was making a sausage sandwich, I would leave it in this case. Get out of there. Uh, oh, a little bit of chunk of gristle. Okay. Now while that's coming up, I'm going to just kind of not really cutting it per se, but just kind of slicing so that I can make it easier to crumble up once it gets in there. And again, don't be afraid to get into your food with your hands. I mean, half the magic of cooking is what you do with your hands. 
After all, magic is nothing more than a bunch of words mumbled with some hand gestures to make something happen. All I do is say abracadabra. Whoop! Chorizo! Okay. I'm just gonna you wave your hand, say abracadabra, and bam, I'm making food. Doesn't say how fast it has to happen. Carter, get out of there. They smell the chorizo casings. <laughs> And as this cooks down too, it'll it'll be crum it'll crumble better. But I want to give it the best start possible. So when I throw it in there, it'll be good to roll. Okay. Now I want to get this beef mostly brown before I add the seasoning. Um, I have known people that add it in when it's you know before they even start I like to add it shortly after and once it's just about brown that way you've got the juice <laughs> the fat from the meat that's cooked down that allows the seasonings to incorporate into the whole concept better and again this is a general guideline we all know Guidelines are meant to be sort of followed. <laughs> it's not like those, you know, stop signs with the white outline on them. <laughs> They're actual stop signs, too. So, as you move along, you, um, as you move along, you want to get that brown down. Okay, we're back. Now I'm getting this brown down. I should turn my heat up a little bit to seven and a half just to progress it because it's not like I'm trying to cook a steak where I want it, you know, a certain doneness on the inside and the outside. This is ground beef. There we go. And we just want it all brown. So, we're almost there. The where did I, oh, <laughs> what I'm adding into this is plain old taco seasoning mix. Nothing fancy, nothing special. It's just the right blend of stuff to make it taste the way you want it to taste when you're making nachos. And I will say this, that if you're doing this with one pan like I am tonight, because I'm lazy and don't want to do dishes, um, I do the meat first because... Then I don't have to dump out a bunch of oil from cooking the chips. And yes, I will do the chips in oil because honestly, I did make an attempt at making taco or nacho chips in the air fryer and failed miserably. <laughs> not knocking the air fryer, but it's just not for that. Okay, we are just about there. So I'm going to add some seasoning. Now I'm not going to add the whole packet. Season to taste, I always say. But because I, I don't have a mega amount of beef here, a little bit of the packet. There we go. Now I'll just fold that over and save it for the next time. Now I just want to kind of stir that seasoning in there. You kind of wish you could send smell through the videos because I'll tell you, it smells amazing right now. Okay. And I also didn't use a ton because the chorizo has its own seasoning, which I'm sure the two are actually going to mix once I start them cooking together. Okay. Now, chorizo, yeah. Um, yeah, that's what I'm Had to think about what else I was doing, so... Now, as the chorizo warms up, it will it will become crumbly, so I can get it mixed in more. It makes a really nice combination of meats, the beef being a little milder, and the chorizo being a little more of a spicy. And I don't mean that in the hot, like burn your face off, but son of a gun. And drop the spatula. Fortunately, I have another one. <laughs> So what happens when you do these live? Well, not live per se, but live as in I'm 
recording is ended going. Now I'm just working through everything and chopping up the chorizo as we go. And it is getting easier to chop as it warms up. There we go. Okay, and now, due to the magic of filmmaking, I'm going to skip to the end where this is all done. Okay, now, I have let the beef go a little bit longer than I normally would if I was doing just beef because that seasoning and flavoring from the chorizo that comes out into the pan when you're cooking, I wanted the beef to soak up as much of that as possible. So I keep stirring around, keep it going. Now, because we are kind of health conscious, what I'm going to do, pop this out. I've got a plate with two layers of paper towel on it. So I try and train as much of the grease as possible. Ow, oh, that was hot. I'll probably turn the heat off while I'm working. Now I'm going to, this last section here, I'm going to kind of tip the pan up and see if I can get some of that grease to drain down before I scoop it. Good thing I cleaned with bleach after I did my flour tortillas earlier. There we go. Okay. Coming together. beef and chorizo mix. There we are. Voila. Ooh, I am not even going to try tasting that because that is too hot right now. Uh, what I am going to do though, take another plate, pop it over the top, keep the heat in, take a hand towel or two, pop them over the top of the plate, again help keep the heat in. Put that to the side. Okay, now I'm going to wash the pan. Oh my God, that tastes good. I'm going to wash the pan, be right back, and we're going to make our nacho chips. And on the nacho chips, wash the pan. I've got oil in here. I'm going to turn it down just a touch. Running this at a, about six. I realize some people say, is about six an actual setting? If you really want to ask that, feel free, but you're not going to get an answer you like, I'll tell you that. Now, the tortillas, how you cut these is entirely up to you. I don't like this knife. Actually, I'm going to get a different knife. There we go. Something beefier. How you cut these is entirely up to you. You kind of want to make it so they're vaguely chip shaped. Obviously, if these were perfectly round, it would be a lot easier. But, we work with it. Now, you'll see over here, I have a colander, which is a bowl with the holes. Like that bowl with the holes. Uh, let me check one thing. Yep, it's hot. Old school. And you just want enough oil in there that your chips are going to float. Oh, I know what I forgot to get out. Handy dandy tongs. Now, how many chips you put in at any given time, that's entirely it. It's also what you think you can handle. The thing I like about doing the chips like this is the, the varying shapes, I think, make it much more interesting to do things like nachos with. And I got a weird one here. Yeah, it's okay. It'll work. It'll eat just the same. Okay. I don't want to put the knife in. There we go. Now, as they cook, they don't take very long. 
kind of want to make sure you're turning them, flipping them, so both sides get cooked. And if you have tortillas that are a little bit thicker, they will take longer than ones that are thinner. There we go. We're cooking now, folks. Uh, bump that up to almost seven now. The hardest part about cooking is the waiting. Now, when these come out, they're going to go in the bowl with the hole, which is also known as a colander or a strainer or whatever you like to call it. And the reason I've got the paper towel on here is the same reason I put paper towel for the meat. So that it drains the grease. Because you don't want to be super, super greasy. A, it's not healthy. B, it just it changes the texture up in my opinion. You can hear them cooking. Just going to go in here. Now if I put a little more grease in there, or a little oil, more oil in there, I should say. I could actually just shuffle them around in the pan, but because I, I don't want to over over pour, <laughs> that one's almost done. There we go. Now I'm using tongs with the the whole silicone thing on the end, which is nice because it's easier for picking stuff up. But it doesn't. It also doesn't really. It gives you a little more grip. Uh, it's heat resistant, so that's nice too. Now, once they're feeling kind of hard and solid, yep, no wiggle. So let me pull these. And if it's too soft, pop it back in for a couple more minutes. You're not going to be breaking any rules if you do. There we are. I haven't found any soft ones yet. <laughs> it is possible to overcook them, but again, it comes down to what you prefer as far as crispiness for nacho chips. There we are. Am I going to have to do a second montage? Oh my goodness. Two montages in one video. I might have to download some more music tonight. <laughs> it just might happen. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to montage the rest of my tortillas to chips to nacho chips. And if I wasn't feeling lazy, there'll be some different music to it. So, one, two, three, montage. is done for now because we're on the last batch as I put these in now I have to look at my framing I may or may not have caught a little bit of side work I was playing with here okay so what I did is the last one here I can go on here the last one I made into a nacho soft taco whatever the hell you want to call it taco so just to see I got salsa, sour cream, cheese, and our meat mixture on there. This is just because I want everybody to see that you can actually use these for this too. Oops. Mmm, good. I'm going to duck down so I'll move the camera. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Mmm. <laughs> Very good. You also notice somewhere in the middle there. I changed up my tool. It's one of those things you think about, haha, <laughs> when um, you suddenly realize that you actually have a tool more suited to the job you're doing than the one you're currently using. It's like using a standard hammer to pound a post into the ground when you realize all of a sudden you've got an eight pound sledgehammer sitting over there. You can just go grab that and it'll work faster. Same basic concept. Hmm. Don't worry, kids, I'm not spoiling my dinner. 
these are almost done and we've got a great um, batch of nacho chips here I'm cleaning up as I go along mm. I drip <laughs> Damn, that is really good. Better than Taco Bell any of the week. <laughs> An excellent mix of flavor. Don't talk with your mouth full. <laughs> The flavor on that is fantastic, I will say that. Not that I'm surprised by that. Okay, so. So I'm trying to eat. Now that's why I normally don't eat when I'm doing these videos. <laughs> okay, that's done. So we're going to turn off the stove. I'm going to shuffle some stuff around. And I'll be right back with you so we can move on to the next step. Okay, so we have here our tortilla chips, our nacho chips, whatever you want to call them. Um, the, there we go. I'm going to shuffle around a little bit here. Okay, I'm actually going to switch bowls for this. Stay. I'm going to go back to the red bowl we used earlier today. Dump all our chippies in there. Not too bad. Only had a little bit of oil get through to the bottom. That means you're doing, you're doing a good job of straining. Now, usually you put salt on these. Instead of salt, we're going to actually take our taco seasoning mix that we used in the meat earlier. Very lightly dust it across the top. Now. Shake it around a little bit to distribute. Add a little bit more. You don't want to overdo this because this will be super powerful if you do. Now, if you if you'll eat taco seasoning raw, go for it. But just a little bit more, and that will be good. There we go. We have our chips ready to roll. So. I'm going to kill the camera for a minute. When I come back around, I'm going to have everything set up to prep to do our actual nachos. Be right back. Okay. Now, I am doing these in the air fryer for a reason. So, first thing I'm going to do, put some chips on the bottom here. Get a nice layer of chips. These are still warm, which is a good thing. It's not bad. Basically, you want to get enough chips to get a full covering on the bottom but you don't want them flat because then the air won't go through and that's the whole way the air fryer works and some of y'all are like, ah oh, damn it I knew he was going to get the air fryer involved somehow yes yes I am um, okay now we're going to put some meat in I need a bigger spoon <laughs> let's see what I got here bigger spoon. So gently spoon it in. I will warn you this will be a mess in your air fryer later. Gonna be some dishes washed tonight. I think this is actually a dishwasher safe but I just do it by hand anyway because it's really simple because it's super non-stick. Okay there's our first round of meat. Next step Now, again, how you do this is entirely your choice. I'm using fine shredded Mexican blend because I happen to like it. There we go. Now, the salsa and sour cream we generally put on, I generally put on afterwards. Um, there's just something about salsa being heated up. It just doesn't taste right. It reminds me too much of um, pasta sauce, red sauce. 
Okay, now it's time for more chips. If I can find a place that served nachos that actually layered them like this, I'll tell you, I would be super happy. But most places just throw a pile of chips on a plate. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're good. But they throw the chips on the plate. Stash, uh, throw some meat on top and then the toppings and throw it under a broiler. Which, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not bad. I just like it to be a little extra. Round two of meat. The nice thing is this is all cooked already, so we're really not cooking it in the air fryer. We're just kind of bringing it together in the air fryer. And you can add in any toppings you like, really. There's no rules that you have to follow. There we go. See, I like the cheese in the middle because the cheese actually helps hold everything together as it melts. The fun part is going to be getting this out of here. <laughs> I openly admit that. There we go. Okay. Now, just a few more chips on top. Give it a top. You'll see why I'm doing the extra chips on top when it's done. There we go. Okay. Hold tight. I'm going to shift the camera. Okay. Into the air fryer we go. Just made it. Now, let's see. Everything's cooked, but we want to melt the cheese, so we're going to do 370. Let's do five minutes and see how it does. See y'all in five minutes. That's my sign. Ooh, it maybe it was a touch much, but you know what? It's all well melted. Now comes the fun part. See if there's a way to get this out of here. Are you plate? Actually, what I need to do is refocus the camera. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay. So, now comes the fun part. Seeing if we can get this out of here. I do have a plan B if this doesn't work. <laughs> yep, plan B. Plate number two. same place anyway. <laughs> there we are. Nachos in the air fryer. Of course I didn't get any of the sauce and sour cream out. Mm, very good. I think this is going to be a keeper folks. Anyway, let me bring this back up for a minute. Okay, so seen it all. We made our homemade flour tortillas. We made our meat for our nachos. We made nachos in the air fryer. I would say probably three minutes would be enough next time, but it's not bad. It's actually just about the right amount of crunch. I would say three minutes just to lay off the cheese a little bit, but very good. Looking forward to chowing down. Remember to thank a farmer for putting the food on your table. Yeah, I know. You go through a few other things, but starts with the farmers. Don't forget that. Big shout out to all our first responders, all of our medical staff, all of our letter carriers, post people, whatever you call them, to the sanitation workers, the trash guys, DPW, all the people that are still keeping this country going right now. Big shout out to you. Take some time when this is done and relax. Try and get a little relaxation time in now. 
especially the first responder, we're seeing way too many suicides in the healthcare business right now. Um, specifically EMS, specifically in doctors and nurses. Think about these people. Take a minute to think. If you know somebody that's a doctor, a nurse, an EMT, a firefighter, take a minute just to say thank you. It doesn't sound like a lot, but in the long run, it makes a huge difference. Make sure they're doing okay. We can't afford to lose any more of these people. Be awesome. Be you. And always, make food. It's good. Catch you all next time.